Hey there, this is Jamie, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the example that I used in my teaching note for this week. So I'm starting here with an Excel spreadsheet that I've got organized with my question parameters here in this text box, and then I've divided it into two sections. I've got my inputs on top and my outputs on the bottom, and where I'm going with this is my return on investment. I want to figure out if this particular digital advertising campaign was effective at raising sales. So let's take a look at the question parameters and we'll fit them into our inputs as we go. Once we have all the inputs fit in, filled in, we will come down here to the outputs and we'll calculate each of them. So what we know here is that we've got an advertising campaign and it showed advertisements to 50,000 unique users. To use the language of experimental design, we'd say that 50,000 people are in our treated group. So I'm going to enter that here. I've got 50,000 treated individuals. Then I've got the number of people who saw PSAs, public service announcements. In the example, it's for the Humane Society. So we showed 5,000 people cute pictures of puppies and told them to foster, adopt, or sponsor. So I've got 5,000 people in my control group. I also know that the number who saw the advertisements who went on to purchase our product was 2,000. So of those 50,000 people who we showed ads to up here, 2,000 of them purchased. But in the control group, only 75 purchased. So the number of people in the control group who purchased the product was 75. In total, I'm going to jump down here, pardon me for jumping around. I showed 3.75 million impressions. 3 million of those were advertisements shown to these 50,000 people, and 750,000 were public service announcements. So when we're thinking about an advertising campaign and we're using an experimental design, we have to pay to show the Humane Society pictures as much as we have to pay to show the advertisements. So here we're going to include the actual number of impressions, and we're going to assume these are exact numbers, and we've got 3,750,000 impressions that we're showing. We also know from our parameters that are given is that the dollar value of each convert is $45, and that's basically just the marginal product, or sorry, the marginal revenue on that additional sale. And the cost per thousand units, that CPM, it's from the French cost per mille, I believe. Um, but that means cost per thousand. So to show a thousand advertisements, a thousand impressions, it costs $11.25. Okay, there's our parameters. That's what we need to do. We're going to start by measuring lift. Lift is our best estimate of the increase in sales that has increased, that is, sorry, that has resulted from running our advertisement. And so to know that, we need to figure out how many people who purchased, who, I'm sorry, how many people who saw our advertisement purchased our product. And then we have to compare that to the number of people who saw the PSA. The difference between those two groups we'll call the effectiveness of the advertisement. And the reason it's the difference between these two groups is that in any experiment or any advertisement, let's take advertising specifically, but in any advertisement, we're assuming that we have some customers that are going to continue to buy our product even if we don't start advertising. So in the absence of our advertisement, how much would we have sold? What percentage of people would have bought anyway, right? Our lift is how many people we get to purchase our product who would not have purchased it anyway. So our conversion rate for the treated is the percentage of people who saw the ad that purchased. We can enter that as a formula by saying that it's the number of people who purchased who were treated divided by the total number of people in the group that was treated, right? So what percentage of those 50,000 people purchased? Well, if 2,000 out of 50,000 purchased, we have a conversion rate of 4.0%. For our control group, we can think of that conversion rate, the conversion rate for the control, as 75 people who purchased out of 5,000 who saw the public service advertisements. 
So that's 1.5% of the control. So of the people that we were targeting with these ads, 1.5% would have bought anyway, but 4% of them purchased. So we can say that the benefit is the number who purchased, who were shown the ad or the percentage, minus the percentage that saw the control. We call that measured lift, and it's the difference between the conversion rate for the treated group and the conversion rate for the control group. And in our example, that's 2.5%. So how we can think about this is how many people did this advertisement cause to purchase who otherwise would not have, right? How many new converted users did we have? And so if we know that if we showed 50,000 people this advertisement and 2.5% of them only purchased because of the advertisement, we can multiply our lift times the number of treated individuals and come up with 1,250 people. This is, the, these, this is the number of people that bought because they saw the ad. And we would say that those 1,250 people would be a measure of our success for our advertisement. So what's the marginal revenue of advertising? In the case, this comes under the question of how much money did we make, right? How much money did we make on this advertising campaign that we would not have otherwise made? It actually turns out, when you frame it that way, that the answer to the question is really quite simple. We convinced 1,250 people to buy our product who would not otherwise have. And for each of those people, the marginal revenue, the value of that purchase is $45. So we can say that by running that campaign, we, we earned $56,250 that we wouldn't normally have earned. Right? That's the benefit of the campaign. You know, that seems like a good number, and we might think right away, oh yeah, we've been successful, right on. But that's not necessarily true because we don't know how much that revenue is compared to the costs. And this is where the idea of a return on our investment comes in. So our cost of our campaign is equal to the cost per thousand, 1125, multiplied by the number of impressions divided by a thousand. So we end up with an advertising campaign that cost us $42,000 to run. Basically, we could think of that also just as how much does it cost? How much did it cost us to get each one of these users? So we have a campaign that cost $42,188, and by running it, we got 1,250 sales that we wouldn't have normally had. So that cost of converting a user is $34. So we can see here that we can calculate our return on our investment because we've got a measure of the revenue from the campaign and the cost. And we also have a measure of the value of each converted user and the cost to convert that user. And I'm going to give you two formulas or two ways to do it. One is thinking of using our marginal revenue and our cost. And that formula is revenue minus cost divided by cost. So our return on our investment is the profit that we made, which is 56,000 minus 42,000, divided by what it cost us to earn that additional revenue. And so that gives us a return on investment of 33%. We can get to this another way by using our value per user and our cost of converting a user. And we can calculate that by saying that it's $45 is our profit per user, or our marginal revenue divided by our cost, and then we subtract one. That's just another way of calculating the formula. And here we have a rate of return of 33.3%. So that has a positive rate of return, indicating that the revenue that we earn outweighs the cost. And this gives us a sense of how much money we made, what that difference is, and what our profitability would be. And so we'd use that um, compared to a chi-squared p-value that we had calculated before to help us understand both the economics or the practical significance, right, this positive return on investment, and the statistical significance of the result. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.